whether it's the focus or you know, we, we just weren't in sync and we certainly um, weren't on the same page. So it, it's, it's disappointing from that perspective, yeah. Where did you, I guess, see those defensive breakdowns uh, most often or, or early on? When did you tell uh, I think it was a little bit of everything. You know, we compounded that a little bit with the number of turnovers. Um, and I thought that kind of got you know, the Bulls going early. Um, so, you know, you, you beat yourself on one end and then we, you know, failed to get stops on the other. So it's a recipe for disaster. You said beat yourself, you still shot 51% and, and things like that. Those are empty possessions, you know, and you can't afford that against a really good team. How did Spencer look in his first game back? I, he looked fine. I mean, I think he's moving well. Um, he didn't look, you know, winded at, at any point. Uh, so we'll see how he responds, you know, his knee responds, but I think he's fine. Of a concern is the knee when he's just coming back after missing that. Uh, it wasn't necessarily a concern, you know, you know, for as far as playing. I mean, just how does he respond after not playing for, you know, seven or eight days? So I think that's probably the biggest concern is see where he stands tomorrow. But I think he's, I think he'll be fine. Is there the reverse you've talked to us about uh, when shots aren't falling you don't, and you're playing good defense, you don't get that reward or that payoff? Is it the reverse where when shots aren't yeah, falling? That's, and a, you know? that's a question I, I don't have the answer to. I can speculate, but I just didn't think our effort and focus was there tonight on the defensive side of the ball. Um, uh, I, mean, I addressed it after the game. Our care factor has to be better. It, it just has to. Um, you know, we, we've seen early in the year where we could be and how we can play when we guard. And we haven't seen it since. So that, that's the, probably the most frustrating thing for me. I know it's just a number, but you guys are below 500 for the first time this year. Do you address that with the team as well? Is that kind of part I mean, of it? I think they know. I mean, it's something that, you know, it's, it's the first time and it's not the end of the world, but how do we respond? You know, and great opportunities to do that. And, uh, you know, it's now. We, we have to go now. It's, it's not something we think we can just kind of wait on. Um, I know we're trying to get guys back, and but we've played at a, at a certain level before. Um, we need to get back to that. Chase. Hey, Wes. Um, obviously, three-point defense was a common thread between this loss and the last time you played them. Um, was it similar in terms of uh, the defensive breakdowns, or did, you, did they just make tough shots, or did you think that there were way too many open looks tonight? Uh, I think a lot of open looks. Uh, there were some coverage breakdowns. Um, you know, I think is I think probably all, all the above. It's tough to say right at this moment without watching the film. But you know, feeling the game, it just felt like they they got it in a lot of a lot of different ways. And lately, it seems like you guys have had uh, some problems with turnovers, particularly in the first half. And you know, there have been fewer turnovers in the second half. But uh, what's going on in the first half where you guys have to make that adjustment seemingly every day? Uh, well, we're not really making that much of an adjustment in the second halves, honestly. It's just carelessness, you know, over-dribbling, um, you name it. There's a lot of reasons for it, but it's not one overlapping theme that this is the why. Um, just I think our, our overall focus, you know, it's just got to get better where we value it, you know, and understand how important each possession is. You know, we lost a tough game against these guys. It came down to one possession. You know, if you, that's an easy one to remember you know, the, the, the tough shot at the end, but what about all the other possessions throughout the game, um, you know, that compound themselves and, and lead to that moment? You know, if we take one of those out, maybe it's not, we don't find ourselves in that situation. Similarly, similarly tonight, it's, you know, you, you allow those things to compound and before you know, before you know it, they stack up. Uh, so I think just trying to avoid them when you can, and I don't think anyone's trying to turn the ball over, but, you know, you get one or two bad possessions, the mindset needs to be, hey, we need a really good possession here and, and get a great shot. Josh. Coach, what did you feel? How did you like the way uh, Spencer looked to be aggressive, um, particularly in the second quarter? Oh, yeah, I think it's great. Um, you know, we talked about it at times throughout the year that we need him to be aggressive. And I want all our guys to be aggressive. And, you know, sometimes it, we mistake the, the level of aggression with the number of shots. That's not it. Um, being aggressive is more so maybe being assertive, you know, reading what's in front of you, attacking the defense, putting pressure on them, uh, then making the right play. So, you know, I want him to con continue to do that. What elements of, of Kyle's offensive game lately uh, are sustainable uh, for the rest of the season? 
Well, I, th I think yeah. he can still stay aggressive uh, as far as attacking in the open floor. Um, you know, I think that's been good for him. It's been good for us. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's a, any difference with, you know, the number of guys we may have coming back. You could argue there might be maybe fewer opportunities um, with, you know, more ball handling on the floor. But, and I think, you know, we get misses. We, we've said it since day one. Let's get out and run. Let's get out and attack. And, you know, I think that uh, he's excelled in that area. Thank you, Coach. Neil. Hey, Coach. Early in the season, statistically, you guys were a good three-point defense team. You know, lately, it seems like, you know, teams just have an open shot all game. Do you think it's, you know, beginning of the season, maybe things were just lucky and you teams were missing? Or is there a clear difference in the three-point defense you guys are playing? Um, I'd say there's probably, you know, maybe a little luck in it early in the year. But um, you also factor in who we're playing. You know, we've played some of the top, you know, tier three-point shooting teams as of late. So, um, you know, you got to factor that in as well. Uh, no, our defense has not been great across the board. So, you know, we, we can acknowledge that, but I think understanding um, how they're getting them, you know, are, they, are these coverage mistakes, are they tough, you know, tough pull-ups? Um, it's been a variety, I think, of both. But in general, I'm not panicking about that specific area you know, of, of our defense. Thanks, Coach. Safe travels. Thank you. Last question to Wayne. Hey, Coach. Um, considering the, the, the first time you played Chicago and tonight, did they switch up anything or was it – was it just one of those nights? Um, they, I don't think they switched up anything um, uh, necessarily. I'm sure they, you know, were keying in on some of the things we ran and, and how we played in game one. Uh, but uh, you know, once again, they were aggressive. You know, and I think that's uh, they set the tone early, um, and, and we didn't respond very well. And lastly, Coach, uh, I, it, you could say it came down to Chicago's bench. Uh, what made them so effective tonight? Uh, it's, I mean, it's it's one of those things that they, their depth is has been good all season. Um, I think you know you got a guy like Kobe White comes in, he, he's like a little microwave. He, he heats up quick. Um, you know, you know, I think that's that's part of it. You know, but the, that second unit just kind of felt the energy of that first group um, and continued to play well. Uh, we struggled a bit with our second unit, um, but even our starters, we, we struggled to get stops. And I think that's the uh, it's got to be a priority for us you know, that. No matter we're making shots or not, you know, recently we have been. Um, the defensive side is lacking. It's not there right now. So obviously the offense is clipping, but what did it come down to for you? Uh, first we're going to learn to save Jesus Christ. I mean, it was, we just couldn't guard. We just can't defend and we turned the ball over. I mean, that's not going to win like that. So this team is number one in transition, getting out. Yeah. Two of the best scorers in the game right now. And all the role guys are playing at a high level too. So just didn't uh we didn't show up. You obviously twice now have shown that you can keep up with them, at least go shot for shot, but when everything is kind of clicking for a team like that, what do you what are the little things that you have to take care of, I guess? Uh making it harder. I think that's just the, the biggest thing. You know, they got a lot of open shots. Um, you know, a lot of the threes were not contested or late contest. Uh, you know, our miscommunication on defense, you know, led to a lot of open drives, you no know, uncontested layups. It was like we we have no pride in guarding guys and helping the next man. And uh it took full advantage of it. You know, a team that can that can score like Chicago can, like you're not gonna you can't score tip for tap with them. Like that that just can't happen. It won't happen. Spencer being back in there was different, if anything. Uh it was good to have him back. You know, it's always good to be able to have bodies back, fresh bodies back. Um, you know, him, Aaron, I uh, will uh you know, seeing them get their minutes and get acclimated, get their feet wet and the lungs back and legs back under them. It's always good. You know, it's I mean, I feel like we, we did solidly on offense. You know, we just – we obviously could be better, stop turning the ball over, um, make shots. But offense isn't why we win or lose games, you know. So, so we guard. Not only shit. 
that you showed him a move out there that he then <laughs> turned against you <laughs> really quick. What was that? What were you telling him? It's weird because he was traveling, like he got caught with two travels in the corner. And uh, it's because he was very indecisive. And I was like, as a young player, you know, you got to kind of know what you're about to do before you receive the ball. You know, and I looked at Coach Donovan and he was just telling him, just catch and go. And it's funny, I told him the same thing. I was like, you just, you just got to catch and rip. You know, don't show for your feet. You catch and shoot or you catch and go. Sure enough, his ass caught and went on me <laughs> to a wonderful pull up. Uh, but you know, this you know, he's a really talented young player. You know, he just had his jersey retire with Illinois, and I just I told him I was like, no, not a lot of people have that. You know, um, that's a huge accomplishment. That's a blessing. Um, you know, what you meant to Champagne and everybody down there was, you know, that that meant a lot. You know, and to see his run and see the love he received from that, that was that was pretty cool. So I'm I'm a fan of his. You know, I hope he he does well. He has a, a really good group of vets over there and a great coach. So you know, his the sky's the limit for him. Chase. Hey, Brad. Um, it seems like lately you guys have had uh, some problems with turnovers, particularly in the first half. And, you know, sometimes you've been able to clean them up in the second half. But uh, how has that kind of made things difficult for you guys, uh, you know, kind of getting behind the eight ball, I guess, with the turnovers early? I mean, I mean, it's kind of just what you said, Chase. I mean, it, it digs us a hole, you know, especially when you're playing a team that's number one in transition and scoring and getting out. And uh, and converting those off those turnovers, you know. So it's tough, man. We're not gonna win like that, you know. We already struggled defensively, you know. We don't make it any better or easier on us when we turn the ball over, um, you know. So we eliminate those. We at least give our defense a chance to get set, and you know, give us a chance to try to guard. But you know, if we we don't, if we're not committed to that, and we're not obviously taking care of the ball, it's gonna be tough to do. You guys um, against. The Bulls were very good at shooting threes. Obviously, it was a problem last game, problem tonight. Um, what can you guys do uh, better against them next time to kind of lock down the perimeter better? Uh, I mean, obviously, show high hands. You know, um, whenever we're literally just sitting in front of our guy, have a hand up, you know. Um, understanding personnel, you know, Kobe White, Zach, uh, and Alonzo got hot tonight. You know, those are their shooters, you know, understanding you know, who you're guarding, who you're running to, what their tendencies are, and just be ready to guard. You know, it's tough when you got guys who can shoot threes and put it on the floor. You know, so you got to accept that challenge and be ready you know, when you run out there. Last question, Anil. Hey, Brad. I guess, one, did you see, you're, you're a pretty aware guy. Did you see the fan voting for All-Star, and did you have any thoughts on it? Uh, yeah, I've seen it. Um, I don't, you know, me and Neil, it's the same, same every year, every other year. Um, I control what I can control. I don't control the fan voting and anyone that votes for that matter. You know, everybody's guys who get it in are always deserving of it. You know, I'm, I'm never a hater. I'm never, you know, in that lane. Um, everybody's more than deserving of it. Uh, you know, it's, it is what it is. I don't, I don't trip off of it. You know, that's, Control it, I can control the hoop. Thanks, Brad. Safe travels. My man. Can you tell me how excited you were to play? How did it feel to be back out there? I think you had a little bit over 30 minutes. How are you feeling now? Uh, I'm feeling solid. You know, I'm going to go through the typical recovery process and drink my vegan protein shakes and, you know, all that that good stuff to try to make sure uh, everything's good to go for Orlando. Um, you know, obviously excited to play anytime you miss, miss time, especially given the road and stuff that I've had, like, you know, you, you cherish getting back out there, obviously uh, would have enjoyed a, a different result though. What was your general take on the game? You guys obviously kept up pretty well offensively. Uh, yeah, I mean, but <laughs> 130. So, you know, we didn't, we didn't stop them at all, so. The, I guess, where were the defensive breakdowns or was it not there from the beginning? I, I mean, I think in general, obviously, the number one city in the East are playing at home. Uh, they shot at an extremely high level. Uh, I think we have to do a better job defending the three-point line, of course, um, getting them off the line. But, uh, you know, they also made a lot of shots tonight, too. So it's not like, you know, we played a, a bad team either. Christos? Hi, Spencer. Welcome back, first of all. Um, Thank you. How do you feel physically? How I feel? How do you feel physically-wise? Oh, oh, no, I mean, I feel solid. You know what I mean? Like... I take a nap now, but I felt solid in the game, though. And 
what speaking about the game and the effort that you brought as a team, what would you like to to maintain or what would you like to change for the next games? Um, I mean, I, I think obviously topping a hundred in uh, the number one seeds building is is a good sign. Obviously, we didn't want to give up 130. Uh, so you know, if we can kind of maintain the offense, but you know, do do better on the defensive end, we give ourselves a chance to to beat great teams. Obviously. Thank you very much. No problem. Josh, Spencer, how how did you uh, fare against or while you were in protocol? Did you get sick at all? And um... uh, nah, I mean, I was I was fortunate. Um, you know, when I first got COVID back in, I want to say like June, was it 2019 or something like that before the bubble and missed the bubble. You know, that was that was tough. I mean, I was still testing positive like 18 days later and I had the, you know, the fever and all the, all the other stuff the first like five, six days, like, you know, and was in a New York apartment by myself. So that, that really sucked this time. Um, you know, I was kind of chill from, from that perspective. I was, you know, I had an inconclusive and I had a, a couple of positives and my, my CT levels were never really low. So, you know, I just kind of was, uh, had the sniffles. How were you able to, deal with the frustration of having to watch from afar and not being able to contribute um, while you were in the protocol? Um, I mean, there, there's nothing you really can do, right? You just kind of watch, you try to stay dedicated. Um, when they kind of uh, got me out of, uh, you know, quarantine and isolation and whatnot, like, you know, just being around my son, obviously we was great. Um, that's, that's usually how I pass. Pass the time with most of my days is try to be try to be a dad, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Last question to Neil. Hey Spence, when you're watching those games, when you unfortunately had to sit out, is there anything that you watch and try and pick up that okay, you know, when I come back, maybe this is something that I can do um, to try and get on a roll with Brad? Um, I mean, it, it's really just establishing whatever our, our play style is going to be and. You know, I've said from the beginning, right? Like my job is to come here and be complimentary to Brad. So, you know, I know some games when when I was out, he had really big assist nights and things like that. Like I'm all for point Brad as well. You know what I mean? Like and and playing the two and and whatever uh, that that mesh point is. Like it's I'm I'm, I'm up for it. I'm, I'm ready for it. Um, you know, I want to help the team win games. Like you know, I, I, whatever y'all need me to do is is what I what I came here to do and what I'm gonna try to do. When you say like establish an identity, half a you know about halfway through the season, do you think that is something that should already be established, or just given all the new pieces, new coaching staff, it just you know continues to take time? I think uh, in general, uh, you know, for most teams, yeah, I mean it's already established. I think we have a lot of new guys. I think we also play a lot of guys. I think you know, as G League, whatever. I mean, you know, we'll. It's not uncommon for us to have eleven people in rotation. You know what I'm saying on any given night, so. You know, there's a there's a lot of uh, juggling that that coach has to do. Um, and in some cases, I think it's an unenviable position, um, but but it's kind of where we're at in the hand we're dealt. And so, you know, as as things continue around in the form, we got we just got to figure it out, man. No excuses. Thanks, Ben. Safe travels. Thank you, boss.